Hi, this is Paul and one BUG with a brief video tour of the 160 meter and 6 meter antennas here at my station. Here we can see the uh, base of the uh, tower, which is the 160 meter vertical. This is about 100 feet tall. The 6 meter beam sits at 103 feet uh, on the mast above the uh, tower here. So uh, heading over here, this is uh, one of my homemade uh, guy anchors uh, on the tower. They're all uh, just like this one here. Going over to the uh, base of the tower itself real quickly. This whole area out here, by the way, if you see a little junk around, it's all a work in progress. I'm still cleaning up, cutting down trees and uh, building more antennas uh, around here. So here's the base of the uh, tower itself. You can see the little plastic box there at the bottom holds the uh, large air variable capacitor for the gamma match. I'll show you that in a moment. You can see the three wire gamma uh, cage assembly going up the side of the tower there and I will uh, pan up I believe you'll be able to see just above the top of the tree when I get up there the wire there connecting the uh, gamma assembly to the tower at about the 31 or 32 foot level something like that the gamma wires do extend up quite a bit higher to around the 64 or 65 foot level I wanted to make sure they were high enough so I wouldn't have to extend or replace them when I did the tower. I had no idea where the tap point would have to be at that point. Uh, as it turns out, it was about 31 feet and I got that uh, just by luck on the first try. I was very happy with that since it was very cold weather when I did it and I didn't want to have to mess with it any more than I had to. And there is the uh, homebrew seven element six meter beam at 103 feet there on top of the tower. That's on about a 30 foot boom. There are about 100 ground radials ranging in length from 60 feet to over 200 feet around this tower. You really can't see any of them too well. There's a few you can probably see on the ground uh, over there. Originally they were just laid on top of the ground and they've gotten covered up with uh, leaves and whatnot uh, over the years. Most of them worked their way out of sight. This uh, box has been out here for eight years now, so pardon a little bit of dirt uh, inside and out. But I'll open this up and you can see the capacitor they were used for the gamma match on 160. There's some extra components in here, a relay, a couple of fixed capacitors. This was a dual band feed, 160 and 80. But after I cut down the trees that were in close proximity to the tower, it no longer wanted to work on 80. A very interesting uh, thing I discovered there. So now it's only used on 160. Let me put the cover back on here so I don't forget and get uh, that full of water. So that's the uh, transmitting antenna on 160 and obviously also on 6 meters. I'll come over here and show you a little bit of the detail of uh, one of the beverages. There are four two-wire reversible beverages out of here, out here. North-south, uh, this is the north-south one here. There's also one northeast-southwest, one east-west, one southeast-northwest. These beverages are all made out of WD-1A military field phone wire. It's very strong stuff. Uh, two wires and each, uh, each wire is conducted of, constructed of seven strands. I think four of them are copper and uh, three of them are steel, so it's very, very strong. You might be able to see here in the video, if the resolution is good enough, uh, there is a thin yellow wire attaching the end of the beverage itself over here to the um, support pole or tree trunk in this case, what's left of a tree. That is designed to break. If a tree or a branch falls on the beverage, that wire will very quickly break much quicker. That's just soft copper, uh, about uh, 20 gauge, 18 gauge maybe. Break much quicker than the beverage itself and the whole thing will just fall down. It's attached to the, um, the box here, uh, just below the feed and, and relay box with a couple of quarter inch blade connectors or sometimes called fast on connectors. So those will just unplug and the beverage will drop to the ground with no damage. I come out here and clear whatever's on it and uh, just bring it back up here and plug it back in. Use a new breakaway wire there to attach it. I'm not going to walk all the way down to the far end and show you the reflection transformer, but there is one at the uh, far end since it's a two wire reversible beverage and you can just see the wire running off into the uh, woods there. So that's one of several beverages. There is over here, under this blue uh, piece of a container on this uh, little pole or piece of a tree, there is a relay box. This is what facilitates all the uh, directional switching. There is a controller in the shack, which I'll show in another video at a later date. But there is a relay under there for switching. Uh, the relays here in this box actually 
select one of the four actual uh, physical antennas and in each of the feed boxes like the one I just showed you on the end of the beverage over there there's another relay that selects the two directions for that particular um, antenna. Uh, coming over here one other little thing to show you real quickly on this tour is my little noise sense antenna you can see it there that I use with an MFJ 1026 for noise cancelling on 160 along with the uh, primary receive antennas being the beverages of course I played around with uh, various noise sense antennas and I hit upon this arrangement. This is about a uh, 24 foot tall vertical sitting out here in fairly close proximity to the main transmitting antenna. And that's a strategically chosen location for this. It actually picks up noise that is re-radiated from the uh, transmit antenna a little bit and allows me to get um, enough noise from various sources to be able to cancel uh, noise fairly effectively on a variety of uh, noise sources which I do have uh, plenty of around here. So there you have it, a, a brief tour of the 160 meter facilities uh, transmitting antenna and receiving antennas uh, here at N1BUG. Thanks for watching.